Right understanding only comes when we honor God's authority. Words of wisdom. Stuff Solomon wrote. And there's a lot of space out there to get lost in. All that and more coming up next as Quick Study Bible Discovery TV goes through the Bible. Join us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Rod Hembry. And I'm Janice. Thank you for joining us by television, internet, radio. It's great to have you today as we focus on taking you through the Bible in one year. Today, our reading is in the book of Proverbs. It's a word that means words for living. Studying Proverbs chapter 4, 1 to 9, we learn the right understanding only comes when we actually honor God's authority. That's a key. Corey is also here with Bible history and archaeology. Corey. Well, Solomon did a lot of things during his life. He's a very accomplished king, but one of the things he's remembered for is for writing Song of Solomon and also Proverbs. So we're going to be taking a look at those specific books today. And Rye is here, Rye the Science Guy with Cosmic Mysteries. Ryan? Today we're talking about the incredible distances of the universe. Now, how can astronomers possibly know how far away objects in space are? More on that later. And Janice, do you know? Do you know why you should keep your heart with all diligence? All right, that and more coming up as we continue taking you through the Bible chronologically. Stay there. Corey's coming now with Bible history and archaeology. Here she is. As we pull our scripture reading today from the book of Proverbs, so will we pull our studies from history. Today we are focusing on the authorship of the book of Proverbs and its transmission to us through time. As the second and last king of the United Kingdom of Israel, King Solomon made quite an impact both historically and biblically. The land of Israel was built up during his reign. The Temple Mount in Jerusalem was built, and according to 1 Kings 4, Solomon's wisdom made him famous. He is credited with writing the content of three books of the Bible. One of these is the puzzling book of Proverbs. As a collection of wisdom, the book of Proverbs falls neatly into a popular category of ancient literature. It corresponds closely in style and content to some Egyptian literature, which, according to the biblical account, would make sense. Egypt was a powerful nation during Solomon's reign. The Bible even records a marriage between Solomon and a daughter of Pharaoh. However, when comparing Proverbs to other literature, there is an all-important difference. Proverbs uniquely claims the fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs is wisdom interpreted by a godly king. King Solomon was not the only author of the book of Proverbs. There are references to at least three other sources. The elusive wise spoken of in chapter 24, Agur, son of Jaka in chapter 30, and the wisdom of the mother of King Lemuel in chapter 31. Some people believe that both Agur and Lemuel were actually pen names for King Solomon, as their names respectively mean the gatherer and belonging to God. Well, that could be true. There would be nothing wrong with these men being later contributors to Proverbs. Chapter 25 of Proverbs tells us that it was the court of King Hezekiah, alive over 200 years after Solomon, that were responsible for collecting and arranging some of the Proverbs. 
In fact, according to the Jewish Talmud, Hezekiah's men arranged Proverbs, Isaiah, Song of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes. Now there are three words transliterated into English that communicate the original Hebrew teaching from Proverbs. They are wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now the Hebrew word for understanding is bane. It is pronounced bine or bane. The word actually means the skill and the art of real learning. So superheroes of the Bible know that it is both a learned skill and a trained art to learn. Hearing knowledge is not simply enough. There is a special skill needed to discern what and how to glean the meaning of what knowledge is being presented. And Proverbs helps us gain that understanding. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. We continue in the book of Proverbs. Rod Hembry here along with Bible Discovery TV team and the Quick Study team. And we are studying the book of Proverbs, and this is an amazing book. Now, the Bible says, and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here in Proverbs chapter 12, that he who receives instruction is wise, but he who does not is stupid. Yes, the Bible uses the word stupid, which means willfully unlearned. And so the word stupid means that we are willfully unlearned. Now, many in today's world want to cast off all authority. They want no authority. They, they do not want anyone to tell them anything. In fact, they want to do what they want to do, when they want to do it. That is the definition of the time of the judges, which everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Beloved, in today's world, especially in the West and Western Europe, in America and in Canada, we are living that creed. And that is why we are seeing such chaos in our culture. Shootings, stabbings, killings, uh, nothing is sacred. It's because everybody's doing what's right in their own eyes. When we begin to recognize the role of authority and God's authority in our culture, only then will we become wise. And that's what I want to talk about today. As we focus on the book of Proverbs, there is an assignment. And so here is our overview. In our, in our power guide, we call this strong learning. In our power guide, we're reading Proverbs 4 through 6. We are going to focus today on Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Now let's get right into it. Here is the Bible. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Listen to this verse. It says, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. What an amazing statement. And so, in other words, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that in order for there to be any kind of wisdom successfully attained, there has to be a recognition of an authority higher than their own ideas and their own mind. Now that creates a big problem for today's modern world. 
because in today's modern world, we live for the ego. Uh, everybody looks into the mirror, and I say, look into the mirror. Congratulations, you are looking at the new modern God. Everybody's worshiping themselves and worshiping their lifestyle. But that's foolish, because there is a higher authority, whether we recognize it or not. That brings me to the first point as we study wisdom. Right understanding comes only when we recognize, when we honor and respect God-given authority in our lives. Now, this may shock you, but not every church is evil. For those of you who are people who want to go to a church that doesn't believe in churches, not every church is evil. This may shock you, but God has very good men and women who love Him, are full of His wisdom, who are out there, and they're in church leadership. And the Word of God, of course, is in church leadership. And I, I frequently uh, receive letters and emails from people and say, well, I was hurt by the church. I'm never going back there. Well, frankly, beloved, the same grace that God has given you for your sin, uh, you are required to give to those who have hurt you. Remember the Lord's Prayer? Forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who have trespassed against me. When we hold on to and we are defined by what we've been, who we've been hurt by, then that we become bitter. And that bitter root grows, and Hebrews 4 says that's very dangerous. So I challenge you to learn to forgive and recognize that there is wisdom in God's leadership, and especially leadership that presents the Bible. And so uh, as we look at this, let's carry on to the next point, and that is this, or the next scripture, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. The word doctrine means teaching. And then he says this, do not forsake my law. That is the word of God. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words and keep my commands and live. Here's the point. So right understanding arrives when we recognize that good life-giving knowledge has preceded our generation, and we learn well from the past. When we respect and honor, whether those are the uh, elder fathers in the church or whether those who've gone before us, then we become wise. Today's world believes that anything that's wise only happens now. Within the last 24-hour news cycle is the only thing that really matters. What a foolish position. And that's the position that our entertainment-based culture has moved into. But those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ can overcome that by recognizing God's authority in His Word. So the Scripture says, get wisdom. It doesn't say get cable. It doesn't say get television networks. It doesn't say get and go to movies. It says get wisdom. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but get wisdom first. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Verse 6. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Here's the point I want to make. Right understanding of the world and our lives in it succeeds in our minds and our spirit when we do not devote our lives to our lust, but to thinking and reasoning minds with the Word of God. <laughs> Critical thinking has rapidly left the university system by and large. Now, I'm generalizing here. But many universities, so-called universities, which is actually a word that means unity and diversity, is anything but that, have become schools of programming by the agendas of the teachers and the agendas of the faculty. And we are no longer, by and large, no longer taught critical thinking. Critical thinking only happens with the thinking that we're told to think. But the Bible says that engage yourself in the Word of God. In Isaiah chapter 1, it says, come let us reason together. God is willing to reason with you. The Holy Spirit is willing to teach you. If you look at the textbook, which is the Word of God, and learn why the world is the way it is. Great wisdom, great education, great understanding come from the study of God's Word and putting a priority on seeking the truth through God's Word. I challenge you to do that today. King 
Solomon is a really interesting character when you put together his life from the Bible. Not only was he an extensive architect and builder, he was also a teacher of wildlife and a teacher of wisdom and also a prolific writer. Right now, you and I are taking a look at just one of his writing projects. The book of the Old Testament entitled the Song of Songs is accurately translated as the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Embedded in the title and in historic tradition is this book's claim of authorship, King Solomon of Israel. In the past, some have claimed the title may have been falsely added to give credibility as scripture due to Solomon's reputation as a biblical writer. With analysis, however, it becomes clear that the title was written right into the lyrical nature of the book. Typical in Hebrew poetry is the use of numbers. In Song of Songs, those are 3, 7, and 10. There are three overall sections of the book, seven subsections, and sevenfold and tenfold praise sections. Within the text, a specific word for love is used exactly 10 times. And with the instance of Solomon's name in the title, Solomon appears exactly seven times, twice in the first section, three times in the middle section, and twice again in the last section. Without the title, the pattern of numbers and organization is broken. The title was literally written into the content of the book. As love poetry, the Song of Songs is not alone in this ancient genre, but it is unique. There is love literature from ancient Mesopotamia that, while similar in theme and terminology, is strikingly different in use. The Mesopotamian literature references mythology, was used in rituals, was explicit, and emphasized fertility. None of these elements are found in Song of Songs. A greater parallel is found in ancient Egyptian love songs, though even in these cases, the Song of Songs is much more elaborate. What the Egyptian songs do accomplish for biblical studies is to spread awareness that love poetry may have been an ancient genre that the biblical writer was using as a means of communication. Quick Study Bible Discovery TV is supported exclusively by the financial gifts of viewers and friends of the ministry. We need your help to continue. We are very excited to release the first in a 24 series of teaching through the book of Revelation with Rod Hembree. The first DVD offered this month focuses on the connection John the Beloved Apostle encountered with the glorified Jesus Christ from heaven. John looks into the face of God himself. Join Rod Hembry as we explore the image and the meaning of the image of Jesus Christ. Send $25 or more to Quick Study TV and receive your DVD today. Online givers gain immediate access and downloading of this special teaching on Revelation when you give at www.biblediscoverytv.com or you can send to Quick Study TV, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. In the USA, P.O. Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. Rod Hember here along with Janice. Thank you for staying with us on Bible Discovery TV Quick Study. Next time, as we take you through the Bible in one year, we're going to be focusing in Proverbs again. Our reading assignment is Proverbs 14 to 16. We learned that good home building brings honor and power to a society. And when we do not build our homes properly, then our society becomes weak and dishonorable. That coming up next time. Right now here is Rai the Science Guy with Cosmic Mysteries. How big is the universe? Well, it's so big that we can't even find the end of it. But how do astronomers know the distances to objects in space? Let's study. <laughs> There's a lot of space out there to get lost in. Professor Robinson of Lost in Space was absolutely right when he said this. It is also not empty. 
In fact, the total number of stars in the observable universe is estimated to be 10 to the 25th power. That is one followed by 25 zeros. Our galaxy alone, called the Milky Way, contains about 200,000 million stars. Not only is our galaxy a home to a vast array of stars, but it is also incredibly large itself, with a diameter of 100,000 light years. Astronomical distances are too large to be measured in miles or kilometers, so astronomers use light years instead. A light year is the distance light travels in one year. At a speed of 186,000 miles per second, it amounts to 5.87 million million miles. The closest star to the Earth is the Sun, lying at a distance of nearly 100 million miles from the Earth. The next closest star after the Sun is Proxima Centauri, at a distance of 4.2 light years. To demonstrate how large of a gap this is, you could fit over 4,000 of our solar systems in between the Sun and Proxima Centauri. Although this is quite a distance, compared to the other stars, this is not very far at all. For example, the brightest star in our sky is the light blue star called Sirius, at a distance of 8 light years. That is 50 trillion miles. This still, however, in astronomical terms, is considered very close. In the constellation Gemini is found the star Pollux. It lies at a distance of 33 light years. The red supergiant Betelgeuse is an amazing 400 light years away. That is 2400 trillion miles. The blue supergiant Rigel lies at a distance of over 770 light years. The middle star in Orion's belt is called Elnilam and is over 1000 light years away. Musifi is an incredible 3000 light years away. Shockingly, all of these stars are still just within our own galaxy, and our galaxy is not the only one. In fact, the total number discovered thus far is probably in the region of several hundred thousand million, and it may even amount to a few million million. But how do astronomers know the distances to these stars and galaxies? They use parallax. This is the phenomenon of objects closer to you seeming to move faster, while objects farther away do not seem to move much at all. Depending on the distances between the objects, it can be more or less extreme. Nearby stars have a high parallax, while the distant stars have a low parallax. Once a star's parallax is known, astronomers use a mathematical equation to calculate the distance of the star. Parallax can be used for objects up to 600 light years away. Objects farther away than this require estimations, as the methods are indirect. It is a very humbling experience to look out into the universe and to not be able to see the end of it, nor to even be able to count the stars we can see. Though this has been a rather recent revelation to astronomers, the Bible revealed this fact to us thousands of years ago. The prophet Jeremiah writes, As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant. Interestingly, only two chapters earlier, the Bible also reveals to us that we will never find the end of the universe in this life. If history is any teacher, then the Bible should not be so quickly cast aside. All right, thank you very much, Ryan. Now, Ryan teaches in our Bible Discovery Seminary and College. What do you teach, Ryan, in Bible Discovery Seminary and College? Uh, well, right now, currently, we've, we've got two courses up there, but I teach creation science. So level one, we're talking about creation science versus evolution, and uh, the level two is we're actually talking about UFOs. Very interesting. So make sure you go there at BibleDiscoveryTV.com. Also, follow us on Twitter, where we'll announce new courses and new products coming, and it's Rod at Rod underscore TV, at Rod underscore TV. And you can also feed back on Twitter, and we'll do that on the program here. So it's great to have those joining us on Twitter. All right, we have Do You Know? Yes, we're reading through the Proverbs. Do you know why you should keep your heart with all diligence? Come on, Corey. I mean, this was, <laughs> we did this years ago on night shift in the church. Corey, you know this, right? I do know this. Yes. See, I, I know you'd be very upset if I didn't. Uh, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. There you go. Perfect. And I want to expand on that because I love this portion of scripture. It's pro from Proverbs 4, starting at verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issue of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left, remove your foot from evil. 
You know, it's a disciplined lifestyle. There, uh, there's no way around it. And that is very good advice from the book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. chapter 4, beginning with verse 23. That's, right. That's why it's called Words for Living. And so we encourage you to do that. We, are also, we also need your help. Make sure you write to us. If you can help us out, that'd be great. That's how we're supported. When you write, ask for the quick study power guide. It comes every month, and here is the address, P.O. Box 150, Marysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, we need your help, P.O. Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. And the phone numbers are on the screen. In modern culture, much desecration has happened. We live in a time in which everyone does what is right in his own eyes. It has created a very dumb and unlearned populace, living day by day from urge to urge, feeding our never satisfied lust. All of this at the expense of human intellect and spirit. Many lust lovers have become animal-like, abandoning their reason for lust. The sacredness of God, spirit, church, sex, marriage has been destroyed. But there is great strength for life when we choose not to listen to our lust, but to listen to the solid reasoning of God's word. Hedonism has always and will continue to fail mankind. But God's word offers real and right rescue and restoration of mind, body, and soul. With that we pray, Lord, teach me to think again instead of living from experience to experience. In our Strength in Your Mind segment today, the question is where in the Bible does it say that special wisdom and skill was given to the men of God to build the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of Israel. Interesting, isn't it? If you think you know the answer, then go to BibleDiscoveryTV.com and click on Quick Study. Follow your way through to strengthen your mind and you'll discover the answer. It's also in our discovery letter when you're on the mailing list. Are you afraid of Friday the 13th? I'm not. 13 is the number of redemption. Uh, it was 13 years old when Ishmael was circumcised and came into the covenant. Interesting, isn't it? Joseph is called the Christian Gentiles, the 13th tribe. So while everybody's afraid of 13, God has used that number as redemption. Very, very important. You see, God takes everything dark and makes it light. God takes every fear and makes it turn into faith. I want to encourage you to come to Jesus today and not live in fear, but live in faith. Say, Jesus, I am in fear, but I need faith. Help me be my Lord and strengthen me today. And if you're serious, he will. This program today was brought to you because of the resources of givers and discovery partners of Quick Study Television. Will you join us and become a discovery partner today? You can support us with an offering in any amount by going to BibleDiscoveryTV.com.